Welcome to the Pete the Planner Show. I'm your host, Pete the Planner. I don't know. I feel like sometimes you never watch those old like uh, uh, Bible TV. What, what's the, Nicole? What are those things called? A like, tabernacle? The tabernacle. The, whatever. There's a show, and there's a guy playing a piano, and he's got a nice suit on, and he, and then he just talks calmly. He's like, "Welcome, children." Anyway, <laughs> this is Pete the Planner Show. We're solving people's problems. Joining us today on the phone is Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Pete. How's it going? Did Did you bring an instrument? Me? Yeah, I got my ukulele with me. Oh, no okay. Problem. Good. Excellent. Uh, Lane, thanks for being on the show. I'm in a weird mood. It's only only fair to warn you. Uh, I may have had vegetables today, which always contributes to my energy level. Uh, Elaine, what are we working on today? You're putting a lot towards retirement right now, and uh, you're starting to wonder when will you be able to reprioritize. Tell us about your life, Elaine. Yeah, okay. So I am 32, and my husband is almost 34, and for the past Four or so years, I've been in and out of the regular workforce because I've been um, gestating and birthing oh, and raising children. I, that um, is sounds graphic. No, it's, it's good. It's right. It's hard it's work. I, it is. I know. So I, <laughs> I'm back in the full-time workforce now, and in the past three or four years, my husband has had pretty significant increase in his pay. So we're at a really healthy monthly income, I think. We know where our money comes from, and we know where it goes. But we feel a little behind on retirement savings. So I guess our question is, my biggest question is knowing how much we should be putting towards retirement per month and knowing when that's enough so that we can start thinking about our other savings goals. Awesome. All right, Frank, let's take a look at those numbers. Uh, like Elaine said, she's 32 years old. 142000 gross annual income. And you live in a Midwestern-ish state, which, which is to say that 142 goes a long way, right, Elaine? Even though is, I would say the, the standard of living is a little bit higher where I live. Okay. $7,800 of take-home pay a month. Also $63,000 in long-term savings. You guys are putting uh, $1,600 a month away for retirement right now. And you've got $13,000 in savings. Frank, what, did you, what do we got debt-wise? Elaine, no debts, it looks like. Uh, and you have a, a mortgage. Yeah, of a, a mortgage. Yeah, $1,100 a month there. How long have you been in that house? Half. All right, year and a half. Yeah, maybe getting closer to two years now. And how old are these kids that uh, completed the gestation process? How old are these these things? So I have a almost three and a half year old and an almost one and a half year old. Oh, okay. Little guys. Yeah. All right. So you know, let, let's start at the end. Let's start at a retirement. You're putting in, and I guess it's worth saying you only have sixty three thousand dollars saved and when i say only i mean really at 34 and 32 you should have a little bit more than that i think based on your income but it also mm -hmm. sounds like you've just recently solidified and made that income repeatable would you agree with that yes i'd say that's pretty accurate so but the good news is i mean you're putting 1600 dollars a month away so that would make your million dollar day and nicole i haven't even told you this yet so you could pull up the uh, graphic but your million dollar day would be november 2nd 2035 November 2nd, 2035, okay. what is that, 17 years from now? That would make you 49. You wouldn't even be a fitty. Um, really? It, yeah. I mean, you, you'll be a millionaire. I mean, your husband will be 51, but, you know. Uh, and then you will have at retirement at age 67, which is your retirement age, $4.7 million at this current pace. Does that sound like a lot of money? If I have that in my wallet right now, yes, but I feel like I have realistic expectations of what it costs to live a retirement that we'd like to have one day. So I think we will continue to increase our monthly um, contributions to our retirement, so I hope that that would go up long All right. Term. Well, can you imagine how heavy your wallet would be if you had that much in your wallet right now? Yeah, right? I don't have a rim shot, so I just tried to play like a piano sound to make the joke complete. Sorry, Elaine. <laughs> Um, so you will have at retirement after tax $10,900 a month available to you in income. But after inflation, it's going to feel like $4,600 a month. Your take-home pay right now is what, $7,800 or something like that? About that, yes. All right. So you are on pace to replace that rhyme, uh, your income minus three grand a month right now. How does that sit with you? 
that feels good, assuming we probably won't have a mortgage at that point. Yeah, it does. And then also, but we also yeah. really like to be able to travel in our retirement. I know it's 30, 35 years off, but that's pretty important to us now. And I think that that's something that would be a goal of ours. Do you think we'll still be allowed in other countries by then, politically? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't answer that. Um, so, well, <laughs> here's a fun fact. My husband's Canadian, and I'm a permanent resident of Canada. So I like to think that, yes, we will be able to travel. How does that work? When you marry a Canadian, do you, like, do you, did you, like, say, oh, man, I'm going to have to make really good poutine? Like, did you think <laughs> about that or what? <laughs> Not really. I knew that Canadians were nice, so I thought that that would probably suit me pretty well. But, um... No, I was living in Canada at the time. I went to my master's up there, and it so happens I met a Canadian while I was there and ended up marrying him. Can he ice skate? No. Believe it or not, he's the only Canadian that can ice skate. Man, that's not a very good mate. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, okay, so here's the other idea, too. If your incomes keep going up, that 1600 will also increase over time. So, I mean, that $4.7 million could easily get pushed to $5 million and I mean, your retirement situation looks okay. I, out of 10 Peters, I would give it mm-hmm. seven and a half to eight Peters. Um, so what's his income in relation to yours? What, what, what is his income? He's just under 100000 and I'm just under 45000 And then where, where are those slated? He makes over. He makes over what? Over double what I make. Yes. Uh, what? What what do you think uh, next five years your uh, uh, the future holds for your income? What what's going to happen? Oh gosh, I like to think that it slowly goes up, but I really don't have a good sense of that for either of us right now. I would say it, he's it, in the tech world and I'm in the profit world, so it's not like we're yeah you know, set to become doctors or anything. So, uh, is your tell me about your lifestyle right now? Are you wanting for anything, or is it is it comfortable? How do you view it? You know, I, I would say we live a really comfortable life. We don't, I would describe us as minimalist, minimalist. We don't have a lot of possessions, nor do we want a lot of possessions. But we like to travel and we like to go to different places with friends, and that's important to us. So I would say we're pretty good at spending our money on experiences as opposed to stuff, and that makes both of us content. You always say, and I'm not saying you aren't, but a lot of people always say they're minimalists and they aren't. So let, let's do a little test, a little minimalist test for you. Okay. How many bottles of maple syrup do you have in your cupboard? Well, one, but, Pete, I tap my maple trees. What? So, uh, this can't be in real. A few, in a few, this is a true story. Mary took maple trees to bless. I tap the maple trees. <laughs> you tap maple trees? I do. We have a little half acre plot, and we have three to four maple trees, and we get maybe 12 mason jars of maple syrup every year. Jeez, when they be called maple jars of mason so syrup? Like I'm going to need what did a I say? Yeah, I'm going to no, oh. I'm going to need a ruling here. Frank, um uh, is someone considered a minimalist if they tap? I mean, you got to think <laughs> if you bring maple syrup into the world that you are a minimalist, no? Yes, absolutely. Now I want to even encourage the minimalism and have them send us yeah, I'm, we're going to need some maple yeah, syrup. Right. I know that's going to be a big pain in your neck to pull off, Thank but you. we're going to need that. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. We're going to need that maple syrup. Yeah, we're going to need that. So, okay, so you're minimalist. Um, college for your, your offspring, is that is that an important goal for you? Have you saved yeah. anything for it? We have EdVest accounts open. Um, we have maybe 2000 for the 3-year-old and 1500 for the 1-and-a-half-year-old. Sure. So they're open. We put gifts money that we get from relatives in there and our daycare costs are so ridiculous right now that it's hard for us to redirect Ooh, let's talk about that how, how much are you putting towards yeah. uh is that why you you don't buy maple syrup you make it yourself because you can't make daycare so how much <laughs> daycare are you paying for right now it's about twenty three hundred dollars a month <sighs> good lord that's a lot of money <laughs> um 20, it is. So, wow. Uh, when that is gone, though, like, how does that go away? Will, will you know, some of it go away? Will all of it go away? Or it'll, it'll ha- I think it'll happen slowly. So, for example, when the one-and-a-half-year-old turns two, it'll go down by a couple hundred dollars a month. And then when the older one gets to kindergarten, it'll go down. So, you know, in 
two years, that'll be cut in half, I would say. And then in four years, that will be a lot lower. It'll just be after school care as we need it, I guess. So what I think you do is I think that you always assign that 2300 to the kids and say once you know daycare costs go away, then you can crank up those Edvest accounts a little bit. Um, and, and that'll okay. sort of systematically f- fund their life. You know, if, if you're used to not having that 2300, what, why regather it into your life and use it when you could save it for them, right? Yeah. The only thing we're thinking, and maybe this goes against me saying that we're minimalist, we would like to buy a little plot of land and build a house. Presumably that will be more than our current monthly mortgage. Sure. And we're hoping to do this once they get into school. So I'm guessing some of that will have to be redirected towards a higher mortgage. Really don't know. Which I mean, I, the operative question that that keeps running through my mind, if you did that, is would there be a a, a pond <laughs> that you could fish in on that land? <laughs> I hope so. I would hope so too. An ice skate it, right? Well, yeah, your husband doesn't ice skate though. I, I mean, it's really disappointing. <laughs> um, okay, so that's a that's a reasonable <laughs> thing. But then, is, that would be your you know what the kids are calling their forever house. Is that what you're thinking? Sure. Yeah, you could call that a forever house. What what could go wrong here? Like everything, it seems like maple syrup and um, delicious yeah. scones. Like, I don't know. Just just hearing you say that we are saving enough for retirement really eases my mind. I I guess I just felt like we were so far behind that we needed to really crank that number up at this point. No. Take advantage of the next thirty years, but I feel I definitely feel a lot more content knowing that we're in a good place. You are super behind, but that doesn't mean you're not saving enough. Like, does that make sense? Um, right. You're saving. We should have been yeah. saving more in our savings, but we didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's nothing you do about that, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't freak out about that. I, I think your situation's good. I, I think um, the only thing I would worry about are big changes in income if one of you decides you want to work part-time or stay home if for some reason that's in your cards that definitely would affect your plan but right now things are good i would just be careful not to get addicted to stuff and if you can avoid that you should be all right okay what that's um a good plan you have no what do you think yeah. go ahead i was just going to ask what you think about the amount of money we have in our emergency fund if that's no, it's not. It's not great. I'd, I'd have more than that. I'd effort to have twenty okay. to twenty-five thousand would probably be the amount I would want you to have, especially if you're going to be land people. If you're going to get some ground, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I always feel like if you have a giant plot of land, it means at some point you're going to need like a gator, or you know, you're going to need like some sort of vehicle to drag buckets of maple syrup around. It seems like it could get sticky. We have a we have a pretty hardcore truck, so we've got that part taken care of. <laughs> You know, I have a soccer mom SUV, and sometimes when I feel tough, <laughs> I'll go pick up barbecue, and I'll be like, "I'm going to head out to my truck." But I get out there, and, and it's a, it's a Lexus, and so it doesn't. It's not really a truck. <laughs> um, so what about life insurance? Things are going well. People are, you know, taking the maple syrup in their mouth and things. Like, wh- what's the life insurance situation if things go sour? We're okay there. Maybe I need a little bit more. I have about 250 um, privately, and then another 45 through work. Okay. And my husband has over a million. Yeah, your your assessment is correct. You probably need a little bit more. Um, it wouldn't hurt you to take the whatever you have privately and double it. I mean, it, in, unless mm. you know medical concerns make that impossible, I, I would definitely consider doubling that and just getting a 20 year policy, and you should be okay. okay. It would probably cost you. Twenty dollars more a month than you're currently paying. Okay, but it's I mean, already so cheap. It's like fifteen dollars a month or something. I think we could. Right. I mean, the real pain there. in the, the pain in the neck for people that don't know. It means that you get a blood draw and uh, a nurse comes out to your house and does, tells you to pee in a cup. And I mean, that's awkward <laughs> and embarrassing. Handing someone your urine mm-hmm. is just a weird way to form a relationship. Nicole, I've always said that. You know. You hand someone your urine, it takes the relationship to a new level, and this is a sort of a travel nurse. You know what I mean? I, that wow, that really that was a something. Well, that's where the show went today. Um, Elaine, anything else I can answer? I don't know if I answered anything. I played you some good songs, but is there anything else I can, I well, can you, address? You made you made me feel good. That's that's a positive thing. Um, is there a general rule with how much a monthly mortgage payment should be? I mean, I know that. 
when it comes time to get another mortgage for a slightly more expensive house that they're going to tell us we should get way more than we actually yeah. need. But what's kind of a good ballpark range for where we should keep our monthly mortgage if All our right. income is at the current level it's at now? All right, Nicole, pull that up for me, please. Uh, the main slide there. Yeah. There it is. Oh, wait, sorry. I tried to do like, oh, there it is. Um, eighteen fifty a month is where I'd keep your mortgage payment and they'll let okay. you probably have uh, almost 3000 a month, but I would keep it around 2000 or so, no more than 2000. Okay. I think that's doable. That gives you a lot of room, right? You're at 1100 a month now. Yeah, it, it does actually. Don't get any bad ideas. Okay. I won't. Not yet. Not until you get out of daycare. Maple. Yeah. Only the maple trees. <laughs> Um, anything else? <laughs> anything else I can answer for you? Um, one question. I don't know if I've ever heard you address this on your show before, but are you able to kind of give us a sense of how much money we should have in stocks versus bonds at our age? Right now, with my Roth IRA, and I think my husband's as well, we have it 100% in stocks, and then 10% bonds and 90% stocks with our 401ks. That's fine. I mean... I was going to say ni okay. 90 to 100 is, uh, stocks is, is fine. Okay. Any more than that is just sort of like, eh, you know? So, yeah, 90. 90 okay. I think I have, I'm 40. Uh, the hairline is, uh, will fool you, but I'm 40. Uh, I think I maybe 10, maybe 7, 10. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. You're, you're fine. Okay, that's good. All we right. Leave it where it is. Well, good. Well, thanks for being on the show. Tell your husband we appreciate Tim Hortons, and we're really glad that uh, his country brought those <laughs> to uh, the States. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Best of luck. Please keep us thanks updated. We like the updates. Thank you. Okay, sounds great. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nicole. All right, that's it for this week's show. Uh, at this point in time, we're going to play you out with some music. you want to be on the show, be on the show. PeteThePlanner.com slash podcast. Reminding you, as always, if you hand someone your urine, you'll be fast friends. This is where I came from. Planet Love Tribe, where we drop love bombs, funk missiles, and live in soul shelters. No help to skelter. The heat don't swelter because everybody stays cool. Left many moons ago to bring the philosophies of my ancestors to another place, God. Picked the third rock, gave me to my Earth family, and told me to create. And so I am. Pin in my hand, microphone on the stand. Over vinyl, I command and demand. Magnificence in an instance, I can make you dance, cry, or love. Fly as a dove, released from Everest. The fresh is fresh, and you can call me E.T. Word to John Tesh. Let me bless this harmonic presentation. It's amazing, so amazing. I'm the reason. Uh. Salutations, I bring you love, trying greetings from a far away land. I am the soul controller. Put the remote down and let me take control. You're now a part of my zone, so enjoy yourself. Love, Tron can restore your health. I bring you greetings. Uh, salutations, how you doing? And is that how y'all say it? The tinkling of the keys is an homage to the little, little star. I sojourn over poetic descriptions of sound and travel to my other world. Out of this world, spaceship on my arm took me home, filled by the ink and the megabytes and the hypertext transfer protocol, stronger than the Skynet and the Terminator. I push faders into warp speed, glide with ease, creating a breeze they call a black hole, event horizon, no rear view concerns. This I adjourn, I adjourn. and beats I burn, I burn, I burn, I burn. This I adjourn, I adjourn. and beats I burn, I burn. Salutations, I bring you love, trying greetings from a far away land. I am the soul controller. Put the remote down and let me take control. You're now a part of my zone, so enjoy yourself. Love, try, can restore your health. I bring you greetings. Uh, salutations, how you doing? And is that how y'all say it?